Hi, Paul. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for asking. Um, before I want to get into the music and the band, I was really wondering, um, what is your first musical memory? Um, first musical memory, um, well, my parents took me to see Dire Straits when I was like really little. And uh, I just fell asleep at that gig. It was a huge loud gig and I just fell asleep at it. I'm still really good at falling asleep in like a dark room with loud music happening. So, um, I don't know, I think, I think that's it. Yeah? Yeah. Did you always know you wanted to become a musician? Only really when I started playing, when I started playing bass. And then I was just into it from the first second. I was like, yes, definitely want to do this. How old were you when you started playing bass? Twelve. Twelve, okay. Yeah. Were you already in bands by that age? Um, well, I was... I basically took up bass because my brother told me, hey, you should take up bass because we need a bass player for our band. And uh, so, yeah, I didn't even really know what it was when I started doing it. He just, they needed a bass player, so I just started doing it. And, um, yeah, so we just started out playing like Nirvana and Metallica and Pantera, punk and metal stuff, basically. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And how old were you until you were like, okay, I want to take this seriously? Pretty much kind of straight away, really. Like, yeah, I feel like I kind of knew pretty immediately. Like, I just hadn't... I just hadn't had anything like that in my life before. That it was just like something like a do that sort of came really uh, naturally, you know. Like it came really quickly learning stuff and I, I just found so much pleasure in learning more and more music and just just putting on some CD and just learning all the songs on it and just playing along with everything and just learning stuff. And I don't know, I just got so addicted that it just sort of it was not, not really a question once I began. It's just like, I have to yeah. do this now. Because I read somewhere that you saw Nay or Naomi mm -hmm. playing somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then I guess you approached her because you really liked her solo project. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was, she was playing a little gig in Fitzroy in Melbourne. And it was like one of her early solo gigs. And uh, yeah, I was totally blown away by her voice and the songs she was writing and the way she was playing guitar and like all the combination of everything that she was doing was so original and I was just like totally harassed her after the show and I was like, she didn't know me at all. I was just like, we got to do a band together. It's going to be the best. Let's do this. And then I didn't see her for like a year. Oh, wow. Because she sort of went and did some travel and stuff and... She wasn't really ready to do a band yet. She, she, she was not ready to sort of um, give other people her songs for them to do their thing with them. Do you remember the sound she had back then? Was it kind of similar what you guys have now or was it totally different? Um, she sounded a little different back then, I guess, you know. But she was still playing like some really wild stuff and she probably yeah she would have actually played some tunes that we've ended up doing in the band and even songs that we haven't even recorded yet like yeah there's a whole bunch of, of material that she had yeah. at that point that was still really solid yeah. so when did the rest of the band um, join the two of you um, yeah like about a year after I met her I ran into her again and She'd met, she'd met Perrin around the same time and they had a similar situation. They'd met at a cafe and she had a guitar and she played some stuff and he was playing along on like the chair or something and he was, you know, making heaps of beats and wanted her to sing on some stuff. And it was kind of a similar thing. So she just sort of disappeared and then came back and then we sort of found each other. I already knew Simon and um, had done a bunch of gigs with him before. So he just, he came into the fold and yeah, just, worked out. Yeah, and then you released your first album uh, independently. <coughs> what was it like to do su such a project on your own? Um, I mean, yeah, we, when we started 
recording, we we were working with some other engineers um, and kind of not really, you know, we were leaving it up to someone else to sort of decide how it's going to be recorded and then getting them to mix it and, and all that sort of stuff. And um, sort of, it just felt like it was a bit, uh, it was a bit challenging trying to get what we were after, having to go through communicating it all through someone else who still has their interpretation of what you're asking for them, from them. So we just decided to try to record and mix as much of it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so just sort of went into that. Just, you know, me and Perrin especially had, had, had made stuff before on computer and recorded a bit. But we weren't like fully confident about our ability to record a band, you know. So, but we just said, fuck it, let's do it. And so, yeah, we, we, we did work with some other engineers, but we kind of tried to take on as much as we could ourselves. And, you know, and I, th I think it's cool. It, it ends up with um, a sound that, you know, it's us, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But do you feel like... Um it affected the process for the second album because <coughs> after that you signed to Flying Buddha, right? Mm -hmm. Do you that did that affect your you guys' creative process? No, no, not really. No, I mean we signed a deal where the, we had to have control over it, full control over what the music was and what the music sounded like. So we wouldn't have we wouldn't have signed that deal if, if mm -hmm. it wasn't that, you know. Because yeah. we'd have no interest in making records like for other people, you know. It's kind of for, it's for people to listen to, but it's not for anyone else to tell us how we're going to make it, you know, because it's, it's already complicated enough trying to na navigate what the four of us want. And if someone else is going to come in and be like, oh yeah, all that, really, all that work you did was cool, but just change this and, you know, get rid of that. It's just like, nah, like... So we made sure that we signed that sort of kind of agreement, and uh, yeah, we just we just have our own sort of processes and uh, try not to be too influenced by anything outside of that. Yeah, and I read in a lot of interviews that you guys don't really like to be put in like boxes when it comes to the sound of the band. Um, did it put extra pressure on you for being nominated in 2013 for a Grammy in the R&B section? Well, you know, I guess the both songs that got nominated in the R&B section were both the more R&B kind of songs and, you know, I like the whole Grammys thing, you know, so much in the industry is uh, revolves around genres, how stuff is marketed, where you find it in the shop, what award something's going to win, it always comes back to some sort of genre thing. But, I mean, for us, we're kind of trying to avoid doing any one thing, you know. I guess some of the influences are not necessarily as obvious as other ones, you know. I guess, uh, but, you know, I don't know. Some, sometimes people want to tell you what genre you are and then judge your music by the, uh, the normal sort of rules of that genre. And then they'll be like, why are you doing that thing? Because that's not a very soul, soul kind of thing. And it's just like we weren't even trying to do that, you know. It's yeah. not about fitting within the boundaries of, of this. We just, we just make stuff and we're very influenced by um, just so much different music. Like a lot of African music, Indian music, um, music from everywhere really, you know. Classical music, electronic music, heavy music. So, yeah. would you say that there is a um, hiatus coyote sound in general then? I guess it's just the sound of like whatever we do when we all do stuff together, you know? Because even if those tracks all sound really different, it's, I guess it still ends up sounding like us because we made it really. Um, which is cool, you know, and that's. And that's, you know, that's kind of what I'd prefer people to sort of judge it by, like, you know, the, how much it's us being true to ourselves, really.